proceed with the presentation. Thank you very much. Well, today we're going to be talking about transformational leadership, innovative solutions for engaging and managing the workforce. And what I'm going to do is cover not only transformational leadership, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history of it and why it's so important for us to recognize the importance right now of transformational leadership in today's workforce with today's companies and the better way to engage the people that work with us and develop them as leaders. We're also going to cover a case study on a company that I've just implemented these, uh, uh, these policies, these procedures, and this transformation. And not only are they just going to be amazing for this company, but they've already turned things around in just four months where they're already moving to another level. So without any further ado, let's talk a little bit about transformational leadership, what it is, and how you can implement this in your organization. So transformational leadership defined, transformational leaders are those who stimulate and inspire followers to both achieve extraordinary outcomes and in the process develop their own leadership skills. So it's a little bit different than what we're used to from a top-down decision-making type situation or what we would call the inverted pyramid where the people that are doing the job sometimes have the best idea on how to accomplish the goals and objectives. Here are transformational leaders we're expecting them to kind of take over to do the things that are necessary that are going to help them to get ahead. Now, transformational leaders, let's get this going here, all right. Transformational leadership, what we find is that it has its emphasis on vision, empowerment, challenging the traditional leadership hypothesis. And when we're able to do that, what happens is we've got a model that is becoming so progressive amongst today's companies that it's really taking over. And it's showing us what can be possible. Now, I stumbled into transformational uh, leadership as a matter of fact, because a lot of times when we go to school, we go to college, we go to university, they teach us all the things to do with our, with our, with our people, with our businesses, but sometimes they don't give us those skills right there. And those are the things that we have to develop as we're working. And the goal, again, of the transformational leadership profile is to develop other people's skills other other leaders in the company so that the leaders can then give the vision for what they need to do in order to be more effective. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about my transformational journey. And like Ali had said, I, I was completing this book, My Team Stunk, 10 Rules That Turned Them Into Rock Stars, when what I found out was um, my team had really, um, I'm sorry about that, so we're having a little technical difficulty here on this. So what I had found out was that I, it was really me who was not focused. I didn't have those skills in order to get ahead, to get my people really moving forward. Well, it came to me when I went through over 200 front desk assistants in my first year in practice. And people would come up to me and say, you must be difficult to work for, or you know, who is the new front desk flavor of the month, as they would say. And I recognized that it wasn't, it wasn't my team, it was really me. I didn't have those skills to do it. And I went out and I decided to interview all these different people, all these different leaders who had kept their staffs for 25 and 30 years. And I started to use these procedures and policies of transformational leadership. And what I found was I was able to build teams, retain the people that work for me, hire the right people, and develop them into leaders so that they could move our company forward. And I had a new theory, and my new theory was that leaders motivate and inspire. They relentlessly create the vision and set strategies for action. Their ultimate gift is not to have followers, but to develop many other leaders. It was a different focus, and I also found that it would free up my time so that I could focus on the things that were most important for my business to get us ahead. And this was going to be key in the development of the transformation of the companies that I was growing, of uh, my internet companies, and the companies that I was consulting and coaching with. It was a different paradigm shift when we're focused on developing leaders as opposed to doing something of what is called a transaction. And a transaction is what we do to give to get, so to speak. 
So let's discuss a little bit about what the difference is between transformational leaders and transactional leaders. And there's a huge difference. In the past, what we saw was most leaders were transactional leaders. And a transformational leader was the person who was looking to satisfy the greater needs of the individual. They were focused on big picture. They knew that if they could develop the team, if they could focus on the needs of the individual at the same time selling their vision to get their goals, they were going to be way ahead of the game. Now when we looked at the transactional leaders, we felt that transactional leaders were making many deals with those being led. And sometimes when you're making deals, it, you're going back and forth, and it's a small world in business. People talk, people communicate, and if we're making deals with some people to get them motivated, other people may feel slighted, and it starts to uh, breed a culture that makes it very difficult to get ahead, and it also makes it very difficult for that leader. It's like making deals with your children. We, we all will work with our children and they're all different. We want to be doing different things. But then Johnny says, well, how come you did this for Mikey and you didn't do this for me? So it ends up running into a lot of difficulties down the road. So we like to stay away from that transaction. The next thing about transactional leaders is it's based on rewards versus punishment. So you're either going, it's the carrot and the stick. You're either going to do some great things and we're going to give you all these bonuses and rewards and if you don't do this, we're going to punish you, you're going to be fired, you're not going to be here anymore. And what that does is it puts the people on the team in fear. And we know when people are in fear, the word fear that we use is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. 95% of the things that we worry about never happen. However, when we use fear or we use punishment, some people are going to respond great and other people are going to be paralyzed by that situation. Knowing that, we have to take a look and say, you know, is this the best way for us to operate? A rewards versus punishment. Or are we looking to uplift everybody, create a movement, and get people focused on the mission and objective of what we're trying to accomplish? In the transactional leadership model, it's based on a quid pro quo or this for that. If you do this for me, I'm going to give you that. And again, it's very difficult to keep up with those types of situations and not just keep up with it, but it starts to breed a culture of people that are not going to be able to work together properly. People are not going to come together as a team because they're going to feel that someone has gotten something that they haven't received and, and they feel that they should also. So it's really important to kind of stay away from that transaction and move into what we call the transformation. Now some of the benefits of transformational leadership are great. So for the first benefit, we're going to see higher levels of productivity. And we've seen this especially in, in, in big companies in Silicon Valley in the United States where people are coming together to just increase their levels of productivity. I worked with a company uh, a, a little while ago called Wipro and same thing with them. They're one of the largest companies out there based out of India and they've got people working on focused on very high levels of productivity once they started to develop the leaders. We also worked with a company called Franklin Templeton Investments just recently on a new project that they were going to be promoting where they ended up getting $80 million in sales on a new product, all by transforming their team, becoming the chief encouragers, and it started to lift the levels of productivity throughout the whole team. One of the other benefits is increased employee satisfaction. And as we know, studies have proved that our happier employees are going to be more productive, they're going to stay with us longer, they're in fact going to bring in business. So we need to set up different ways where we can not only assess employee satisfaction, but where we can improve on that. With improved employee satisfaction comes improved employee retention. So if we've got happy employees, we've got happy workforce, we're going to keep that workforce longer. And the longer that we keep the workforce in place, the more productive we're going to be. Companies that we work with out there in the field, they like to see employees that are with a company for a long period of time. It's important also, if we're going to transform and develop other leaders within our companies, that we show them the ability for them to move up the ladder, so to speak. 
for them to be able to attain goals and for us as transformational leaders to encourage and build them and get them focused on their goals knowing that when they are hitting their goals in turn we will be hitting our goals and like I say to a lot of leaders is I, I did a, a program uh, with McDonnell Douglas and Boeing when they were going through their merger um, in the 1990s and they had something we called it um, tribal knowledge and tribal knowledge was the knowledge that someone would gain by being at the company for years and years and years and they would never share that knowledge for fear of being replaced well I had I had managers come to me and supervisors and they said you know uh, Dr. Rick there's a position open and I'd like to apply for that position I think I'd be perfect for it and we would then respond and say we would love to put you in that position but you're the only person who knows how to do this job when you share the information with others you get to move up the ladder you start to increase increase your value because you've got more legs to the table. So by increasing our employee satisfaction, we're not only improving their retention, but we're showing them as transformational leaders that they have the ability to grow within the organization. As long as they share the information, they can replace themselves and develop other leaders. We also build stronger trust-based relationships, and this is the key. I always say that people do business with people who they like or like them. You'll go buy a product from a friend of yours, even if it may cost you a couple dollars more than going to a local discount place. Because we tend to do business with the people that we like, our friends that we feel comfortable with. So let's take a look at some common traits of transformational leaders. Transformational leaders possess a clear vision of their goals and expectations. And it's important that you not only have that clear vision of your goals and expectations, but you've got to be able to communicate those expectations. So many times we see leaders that have a great vision, they have great expectations, and they assume that other people know what to do. When they assume that other people know what to do and those people really don't, they need that direction, they need that vision, they need to know what's expected of them, and they don't perform, then that leader gets upset. And what I say is that leader is their own worst enemy. If you're not sharing your goals and vision on a regular basis, if you're not putting it out there and sharing your mission statement, what you're all about, people aren't going to know. You might be the best kept secret, and how can they accomplish the goals and objectives if you haven't shared them also? So for instance, in our company, our goals and objective is that we provide solutions globally for people and organizations that want to lead, engage, and grow their business. We let people know that, and we do that by seminars, coaching, consulting, uh, giving you know, keynote speeches, all the different ways that we can share that information. Transformational leaders are also energetic, enthusiastic, and passionate. They can sell. They know what they like. They know what they're all about, and you can't sell what you don't own. So if you're not energetic, if if you're not enthusiastic about a project, if you're not passionate, people are going to feel that. What we say is that your actions speak so loud, I can't hear what you're saying, which means people are looking to see how you act, not what you say. And as a transformational leader, if you're not congruent with exactly what you expect, with exactly what you're selling, your team isn't going to have buy-in and your message is going to fall by the wayside. So it's really important that you bring your energy, enthusiasm, and that you're passionate about the vision and goals. We like to say sometimes, fake it till you make it or act as if. Zig Ziglar, the famous motivational speaker, would say you'll always progress into the person that you want to see. Your vision will bring you into that place, and people will know. So when you're talking about a new goal or an expectation, you've got to be excited about it because the people on your team will see And if they feel that you don't have buy-in, if they feel that you're not energetic, they will go the other way and they will not be passionate, they will not be energetic, and they will not accomplish the goals. Transformational leaders are focused on helping everyone to succeed. And that is the big picture. They are the chief encouragers. Sometimes leaders or transactional leaders will find something wrong. They'll look to see what they can find that's just not working out. And when you look to find that, you're going to do that. There was a guy who wrote a book, Maxwell Maltz, called Psycho-Cybernetics. And Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon in New York City. And he had a woman come in one day who had a little crook in her nose, and he wanted to 
go pick out, they chose a new nose and they performed the surgery and she came out of surgery and she was absolutely magnificent. But when she looked in the mirror, she saw this ugly person. Well, they went before the judge and jury because she sued him and they looked at the before and after and they said she's absolutely magnificent, but see, her mind could not tell the difference between something actually happening and something imagined vividly in great detail. Your mind has the ability to do that. If you don't believe that, maybe you woke up one day and you said, it's going to be one of those days. And all of a sudden, or maybe your mom or grandma or your father said bad things happen in threes. And you started to look and one, two, three, four, all these things started to happen. And at the end of the day, you said, see, I was right. I knew it was going to be one of those days. Now, if you don't believe this, maybe you've bought a new car recently or one in the past, and next thing you notice, it seemed that everybody in your area was driving the same kind of car. Or if you're in a rush to leave, how many red lights do you hit? It's in your mind. So when we start looking and we get people focused, we need to make sure to be selling our mission, selling our value, and selling our story so that we can get everybody focused on where it is that we want to go. Now some examples of transformational leaders, some of you may know these people, Bill Gates at Microsoft. He's one of the biggest transformational leaders around. He started with Microsoft in evolving. He wanted that home computer to be able to do anything. He wanted to bring it to people's homes so they can connect on a global basis. He transformed the way we do business today. We would not be sitting here on this webinar if it wasn't for Bill Gates and Microsoft being able to bring his computer and bring the world a little bit closer. And then of course we have Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs created the iPhone. He changed the way we think Today, he changed the way we listen to music. He changed the way we do things. And Steve Jobs was someone who sold his vision. He sold it on a regular basis. He made sure that people did whatever it took in order to accomplish the goals and objectives. Around here, we like to say as transformational leaders, what if? What if brings us to a place of what we call possibility thinking? When we're getting creative, we think outside the box because every one of these transformational leaders thought outside the box on how they can make the world a little bit better and then they encouraged and they got on their people to think outside the box and perform at a higher level than they even thought they could do. Some other transformational leaders that you might have heard of, Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. So anybody who's on Facebook, Facebook or has an understanding of Facebook, he's changed the world. We've, we've seen revolutions take place around the world live on Facebook. He's connected people closer together and if there's people that you've known for years through business or through university and you've kind of fallen out of touch with them, you might have reconnected with them on Facebook and that's all because Mark Zuckerberg had a, had a vision and he sold that vision and he kept creating that vision and expanding that vision. So that's why we know him. And then there's Jack Dorsey, who started Twitter. He taught us on how to communicate in 145 characters, something nobody ever thought would be possible. And now Twitter has blown up around the world where we can get messages out, we can work with people, we can share information, all because he transformed the way we think. And then there's also companies, because companies are transformational leaders also. So when we look at a company like Google, Google has completely transformed the way we access information, the way we can access our news, we can do research, we can watch video, we can communicate with people. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to do something called my homework. On Google, it's a great way to find out about the people you're working with. So a lot of times if I'm working with a company and I want to find out what's important to them, I will go on Google, I will do research on the company, I will look at the people who are running the company and get images so I can put a face behind that person. And then when I contact that company, I can then bond with them and build rapport by just saying to them, you know, I was just doing my homework and I noticed that you just had an excellent third quarter based on the people that you're working with. Well, if I'm able to do that and connect with these people, now I can certainly get answers from them. Now, another company, Amazon. So as we know, Amazon has completely changed things around the world also, the way we buy things, the way we shop. 
Amazon has been able to do that. And they've transformed everything. Holidays, how we get presents. Now we've got Amazon Prime where you can get products and services. And what, what we've seen is most people aren't going to the retail stores anymore to shop. They're going on Amazon and they can shop from the convenience of their own home or computer. So they were transformational leaders turning things around and making things better for us. So my question to you is, are you a transformational leader? Are you ready to transform? Are you ready to do something different? Are you ready to think outside the box and really focus on developing the people that you work with and also developing your family, friends, children? See, transformational leadership can be used on everybody. I use it on both of my children. I've been using it for years in order to build up their self-images and make sure that they never move back into our house and they're able to lead on their own, which is exactly what they're doing today. So let's take a look at the history of transformational leadership, how it came about, because this wasn't my idea. All those great ideas have been out there in the universe. It's time that we adapt them and see how can we use transformational leadership in our area of expertise. How can we use it to affect our company, our family, our friends, our personal lives, and everything around us? Well, it was initially introduced by James McGregor Burns, and he was a United States presidential biographer, and he was the biographer for Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who happened to be one of the most transformational leaders in history, especially when it came to the New Deal in the United States and all kinds of social programs, including Social Security, and also how he transformed and brought people together during the greatest war, World War II, that was ever on this planet. He brought those people together and transformed people to build for themselves and develop other leaders. He believed transformational leaders could inspire followers to change expectations, perceptions, and motivations to work towards a common goal. And again, that's really what transformational leadership is. It's getting people focused in one area to get them to achieve their goals and expectations beyond what they thought they could possibly have done it. Well, McGregor Burns took it a step, step farther, and then a researcher named Bernard Bass expanded on that information. And Bass created some ideas that developed on the theory of transformational leadership. He suggested that leaders garner trust, respect, and admiration from their followers. Because he knew if they had garnered trust, respect, and admiration from their followers, that their followers would do almost anything to accomplish that vision and those goals. And that's exactly what we want you to be able to do also. We want you to garner the trust, respect, and admiration of everybody on your team. And the key way to do that is by developing those leaders, walking our talk people are going to see if you're congruent with your message also. I just had uh, read a post from a friend of mine who is a consultant and speaker and he had left a message on this individual who he was attempting to do business with. He left a message on his voicemail that basically said, hey I'm sorry but these people at corporate really messed up and they really are, are they don't know what they're doing and I apologize for that. Well, he went in to go meet with this potential client customer, and the client customer said, you know, I'm really working with my team to transform them and to, take, to accept responsibility and to take ownership of projects. He said, but, you know, I got this message from you today, and he hit the button on that message, and the message came up and said, hey, these people really messed up at corporate. They really don't know what they're doing. And he played that message over and over and over, about five times for this consultant who was sitting there. And he looked right at the consultant and said, how can I hire you right now when you're passing the buck and you're not accepting responsibility and I'm looking for you to teach my people how to accept responsibility. So it's so important that we're congruent and that we're walking our talk because are people looking at that? They want to see, are we congruent with our message? Are we moving forward or are we just playing at doing this and are we really manipulating or making a transaction, which is more tr transactional leadership? Now, there are four components of transformational leadership according to Bass. And the first one is intellectual stimulation. We need to be able to stimulate our people's minds by training, by giving them projects, by giving them thoughts, by masterminding with them and other ways to get them moving forward. 
Second was individualized consideration. And when we talk about individualized consideration, what we're talking about is treating everybody differently. Like I say, sometimes they have the golden rule that says do unto others as others would do unto you. And that's a great rule. However, I always ask this question. Would you treat all of your children the same way? Some need a little bit more attention. Some say, you know, can you back off? I know how to do this. So we have to give individualized consideration to each and every person on the team because we're all different. We all have different backgrounds. We went to different universities. We grew up in different households. So therefore, we've got to work with people individually and give them that type of consideration. Inspirational motivation. The components of a transformational leadership, they're inspiring. You always remember those speeches that Steve Jobs would give to his whole company. He would take out his newest invention, his newest creation, and he would inspire them. He would, he would paint a picture and show them what it was going to look like when it was actually working, when, when these things were out there in the universe. And that's what we've got to do. If we're not inspira inspirationally motivating our team and showing them our vision, they're not going to be excited to get on board. And we need them to get excited, get on board, so we can develop them and then they can develop others and spread the message. Idealized influence. When we start to work with people and they see that we are walking our talk, they start to form a belief system in our leadership, they will start to mimic and they will start to sell our message. They will start to use our terms and our cultural vernacular. So we want to get them moving forward and when they start to catch this, when they start to idealize we're going to be influencing them. They will start to be saying the same things we're starting to say. They will be walking our talk, and they will be talking our mission statement, which is exactly what we want to have happen. So let's break these components down individually. Let's look at intellectual stimulation. Transformational leaders generally will challenge the status quo. Remember, they're thinking outside the box. When people say that you can't do that, they come back and say, what if? They're into possibility thinking. What if it could work? What would it look like? They also encourage creativity among their followers. I'll tell a team that, you know, you could spell the word Smith, S-M-I-T-H, S-M-Y-T-H-E, S-M-I-T-H-E. I'm not really concerned with how you spell it. I'm just concerned that you could say the word Smith. Well, same thing here. I am not as concerned with how we accomplish goals as long as we're doing it ethically and morally. I want to create some creativity. I want them to think outside the box because I don't have all the answers. And sometimes uh, leaders will shut down an individual and say, well, that's not going to work or, or I don't believe that will work. And that person may have 10 ideas that are not great ideas, but the 11th idea takes you to the next level and makes you millions of dollars. If we don't encourage creativity, we may never get past those first 10 ideas to that 11th idea. So possibility thinking, what if? The leader also is going to encourage followers to explore new ways of doing things. You know, it, my way is not always the right way. There's so many different ways to get organized, to accomplish goals and objectives. So encourage them to think outside the box and explore new ways of doing things and bring you back their suggestions. What we like to do on our teams is we suggest people come back to us with three options for any project that we start. Now, there's a reason why. I don't want them to do the first thing that just hits them and they're just throwing it against the wall. I want to see that there's been a thought process, that they've looked at it, that they've got a plan A, B, and C possibly so that we can do things in a different way and grow as a team. The leaders encourage files with new opportunities for growth and learning. So again, that intellectual stimulation, that individualized consideration also, we need to put our money into training. So for those people that are on the line right now, and these programs that Mile is putting out is fabulous. Every single one of your employees should be jumping on these programs. The reason being is the more information they have, the more money and the more effort that you spend in training your team, the more they're going to be able to be productive, grow, and you'll be developing leaders every single day. So let's take a look at the individualized consideration. Now, leaders offer support and encouragement to individual followers. And that's what I said. We need that one-on-one -on -one time. No different than with our children. We, we need that personal time, quality time. 
So it's not the quantity, but it's the quality of time and support that we give the people on our team. Transformational leaders also keep the lines of communication open. So for me, we like to have what I call an open door policy or, or WWRD, we say, what would Rick do? And if you wonder what would Rick do, we encourage people to send me a quick email with the situation and, and I usually get back to you in 24 to 48 hours as long as we're being specific. But we want to have that safe environment also for people to be able to communicate. If people have a fear that they're going to be turned down or maybe their idea isn't going to be the best, they're not going to share those ideas. So we need to create a safe environment for creativity, for people coming up with ideas where people won't judge those ideas, but we can see how we can implement the ideas. Followers of feel free to share ideas openly, and the leaders offer direct recognition of their followers' unique contributions. Now, this is key. People will leave you even if you pay them a little bit more money if they don't like the job. People stay in jobs because they get praise, because they like what they're doing, they feel that they're contributing. And the most important thing that leaders can do is acknowledge. We always say praise in public, discipline, so to speak, in private. We want to praise everybody in public because other people will then be stimulated. We want them to look at that person or, or team and say, hey, you know what, next time we have a meeting, I want them to say nice things about me because everybody wants three things. They want love, appreciation, and respect. They need it like the food they eat, the air they breathe, and the water they drink. If we give our team and our family love, appreciation, and respect, they will give us everything that we want. If we don't give them that love, appreciation, respect, we can then look for people that are not doing their jobs, not motivated, uh, sometimes we create backstabbers, people that are just not happy, and we'll sab sabotage projects by either delay, uh, not getting on board, or sharing that information with other people and getting other people to follow on with them. So make sure that you have regular recognition of your followers, of their unique contributions, um, and you can do this in many different forms, and we'll cover that in a little bit. Inspirational motivation, people want to feel inspired. Transformational leaders have a clear vision that they are able to articulate to followers. And again, this goes back to not assuming that your team knows exactly what they want to do or exactly what you want them to do. You need to share that vision, and if people aren't getting that vision, and, and I'll sometimes say to my staff, is everybody with me, is anybody lost? When I say that to them, I look around and I pay attention for the body language. I look to see if people are not quite with me. And then I don't, again, choose that individual. I'll say, it doesn't seem like everybody's with me. Let me go over this again. I know that we have all, at some point in time, been in a meeting, and we walked out of the meeting, and we didn't know what the person had just said. And then someone gets the short stick that they get to choose, and they have to go in now and ask the person who was running the meeting what they were talking about. So we want to make sure that as transformational leaders, when we're looking, we're sharing information, if we sense uh, that someone or our team is not with us, then we want to make sure to just say, is everybody with me? Is anybody lost? Let me cover this again. We don't want to leave a meeting where people aren't on the same page. Also, going back to meetings, people don't like to be in meetings, yet we know that they're important for planning, they're important for making sure we're on the right uh, path to accomplishing our goals and objectives. So make sure, like Stephen Covey says in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he says begin with the end in mind. So I want to work my way backwards when I go into a meeting. And what I mean by that is I want to start with my goal and objective. So when the meeting's over, this is what I expect to have happen. And then I work my way backwards so that I can accomplish that goal. Very, very important if we're going to motivate the people on our team. Leaders help followers experience the same passion and motivation to reach their goals. So it's so important for us to really understand the people on our team, what's important to them, what makes them uh, excited, what motivates them. Uh, Tony Robbins has a, uh, a question that he will ask people. And the question he will ask in order to find out what their values are is what's most important in your blank. 
and the blank is fill in uh, that blank space. So I would say what's most important in your life? What's most important about your job? What's most important to you to accomplish at work? And then I find out what's important to them, and then if I can show them how they are uh, doing something right now, a project or, or creating a different system that not only is going to help them accomplish their goals, but it's also going to help us accomplish our goals as a team, as a company, then I am on the right page. That's exactly where I want to be. So I want to make sure that I can help them to reach their goals because that's going to motivate them more. I always say to people, who is the most important person to anybody on the planet? And we all know that that answer is yourself. We are the most important people to ourselves, and same thing with the people on our team. So again, if I can show them how they can accomplish that stuff, I'm ahead of the game. Last is idealized influence. Here, the transformational leader serves as a role model for followers. Remember, people do as you do. They're going to see what you do, and it's not do as I say, not as I do. They do exactly what you do. So you've got to be congruent. You've got to walk your talk. The followers trust and respect the leader, and this is important. They respect the leader because they see that the leader has their best interests, that they're focused on their vision, and they're also focused on helping others. And last, the followers emulate the leader and internalize their ideas. So they start to walk that talk. They start to become that leader. It's interesting because when I was just in Buenos Aires uh, last week, one of the owners of the company said, you know, Rick, I, I don't understand. When you come here, uh, you're the person who generally looks at people and, and decides if they need to still be in the company. And I don't understand why nobody's afraid of you. And I said, well, it's, it's pretty simple. They all know that I have their best interests in mind. I want to see them win because I know if they win, you're going to win. So I don't have any fear of that. They open up. They talk to me because they now see that my goal is to see them be developed as leaders and start to develop others. And once you hit that stride, once they really can see that happening, that's when you're going to be able to make a big difference with someone and make a change. And change isn't always that easy. So let's take a look at our transformational strategy. Now the transformational strategy is one that you're going to employ. It creates an environment and an opportunity to motivate and inspire employees, which is exactly what we want to do. We've got to create that environment. If we're not creating an environment where people start to see that they can make a difference, have a change, they tend to want to leave that environment. So we want to make sure to do that. Second, it's excellent when the company is facing a challenge or a change in direction. So the case study that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about later today will, will show you just how they wanted to change direction and we had to change our situation. We had to challenge people and also change the culture of that organization. It provides a sense of purpose and meaning that can unite employees to achieve a common set of goals. So again, the goal here is to get everybody on the same page, working together. We work together as a team, we practice together as a team, and we also make sure to celebrate our successes together as a team and acknowledge everybody on that team for the things that they've been able to accomplish. Now, we do have a transformational strategy challenge, and here it is. Success is going to depend on highly developed intellectual skills of employees to be successful. So what do we need to do? Like I said before, we need to put time and effort into training the people on our team, into selling the vision. If they don't have particular skills that we're going to need, we make sure to give them those skills. We bring in training. We do different things. So for instance, in Buenos Aires, we just did a negotiation training program with them. We did a conflict management and resolution skills training with them so that they would know how to deal with conflict and master it and get the results that they needed to do. They didn't have some of these skills, and as we started to see we needed certain skills to achieve our goals, we started to put that time and effort into them in the training. Excitement and job satisfaction alone does not guarantee goals will be achieved. So we need to make sure that we're not just uh, giving that rah-rah and getting people excited. We need to keep them focused on the goals and objectives, delegate, and make sure that we have accountability. And that's going to be key. We need to hold the people accountable. We want to have fun. We want to have focused fun. 
but we need to make sure that everybody's accountable on the team and we can accomplish those goals and objectives much quicker. So let's take a look at the different types of transformational leaders. Now there are several different types of transformational leaders. The first are intellectuals, people that are just super, super smart and they've come up with processes and, it, and maybe that is a Steve Jobs or that's a, a Bill Gates, they're just so, so smart that people just respect them and they are able to transform people. Then we have reformers, people that want to change society, they want to do things a little bit differently. We also have revolutionaries, people that just don't believe what's going on and they want to buck the system. And sometimes transformational leaders can do things that can harm people, that can harm companies and organizations also if they're misplaced in their direction. And lastly, we have charismatic or the hero. And the hero is every one of you. You can be that hero and that transformational leader. See, a hero is someone that will stop the dysfunction in an organization, someone who's going to make changes get people excited about it. That's that person who's going to lead and get people focused in the direction that they need to go. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. We want you to be heroes and chief encouragers for each and every person on that team. So let's break it down a little bit and look at each one of these different leaders. The intellectuals, they're devoted to seeing ideas and values that transcend the practical needs of all. They want to do something different, stepping outside the box, changing society for the better. With an intellectual leader, there is a higher moral purpose and vision that can transform society. So intellectuals, they're looking to transform society. They've got that higher moral purpose. Then we have the reformers. Our reformers, movements that require the participation of people, large numbers of people, large numbers of followers to achieve results, they're reformers. And a lot of times we see reformers in all different areas. Maybe it's with politics, maybe it's the way we want to just change society. Reform leaders can transform part of society to realize a higher standard of moral principle. So we want to make sure that we're looking, what type of leader are we? Are we going to be that reformer? And it's all based on what position you're put in. It's also based on your projects, your company, and your vision. Then we have the revolutionaries. We have the people that have revolutionized all different areas. We've got people that may ask followers for the ultimate sacrifice, for the greater good of all. We've seen that in different countries where they've taken uh, society and maybe it's been a different type of society and they've revolutionized and they've done different things. We see that in organizations. We see that with companies like Amazon and Google with, where they revolutionize the way we do things um, and the way we buy, the way we shop, the way we think. Now also, while a reform leader may work towards improving one aspect of society, the revolutionary leader asks for changes to the whole society. So again, that's a revolutionary type leader. And last, we have that charismatic hero. And this is what we want you to be. You are that hero, the hero to the organization. It's the ultimate form of transformational leadership approach. And this is where that charismatic leader is viewed as a hero amongst their followers. So the question is, are you looking to be that hero amongst your followers? Are you looking to change the way the people on your team think? Are you looking to position them to show them that they can accomplish goals and objectives that they didn't think that they could accomplish? Because remember, the mind doesn't know the difference between something actually happening and something imagined vividly in great detail. We use a technique, and you can all use this with your team. And it's a little thing, a little technique that I use uh, in on-site training. It's called the stretch. And the stretch works like this. We ask someone to go over to a blackboard, and we ask them to take a marker and draw a line as high as they can reach on that blackboard. So people will come up, one after another will come up, and they will stand on their toes, and they will reach as high as they can, and they draw a line on that blackboard. Then what we do is we ask those people to come back up. And I will say to them, I need you to draw a line even higher than the first line that you drew on the blackboard. Every single person draws a line an inch to an inch and a half higher than their first line. Now, when I go back and I debrief the exercise, I ask them, well, you said that you were stretching, that you that was as high as you could go, but when we asked you to go even higher, to give us just a little bit more, 
you were in fact able to draw that line on that chalkboard even higher than the first time. So the question really is, are we getting the most out of the people on our team? Are we getting them to stretch? Are we becoming that hero? Are we encouraging them to do even better than they think they can do themselves? See, that's what a great coach, a great leader does. They encourage people to perform beyond their own belief system, to give just a little bit more every single time. Now, the great leadership expert John Maxwell said that the single biggest way to impact an organization is to focus on transformational leadership. There's almost no limit to the potential of an organization that recruits good people, raises them up as leaders, and continually develops them. It is the trend in leadership today. It is the trend of organizations that if you want to build your organization, if you want to grow people, you need to transform them and develop them as leaders by giving them the tools and encouraging them to do things that they could not normally do if they had led it to themselves, holding them accountable and moving them forward. Now, transformational leadership is a lot of mottos, and some of the best mottos come from become change-oriented. We know that change is good, and we know that most people don't like change. However, if we're able to get them to change a little bit, or if we take them back and ask them if they're doing business the same way they were doing business five years ago, they're going to see that they've had to change. So we want them to become change-oriented, so they're com constantly moving ahead, and that they recognize that change is really good. Good enough never is. So transformational leadership, we're always trying to make people better. So good enough never is. Think about possibility thinking. Ask your team the question, what if? What if we could get this done? What if we could accomplish this project in half the time? Because good enough never is. We've got to constantly be moving ahead. If we are doing business the same way we were doing business five or ten years ago, or even a year ago, we're going to start falling behind the curve. We've got to constantly evolve and constantly look for new systems and better ways to get things done. What works can always be better. And Steve Jobs was a big fan of this. He said, you could make it better. Good enough is not good enough. Let's see what it is that we can do to get things going in the right direction and make them better every single time. So when we talk about culture in an organization, we've got to focus on the culture. And the first question I'll ask, is it transactional in nature? So we know that transactional leadership, that quid pro quo, the give to get, the forcing people with rewards or punishment is not an effective way to have a culture in that organization. So we need to transform that culture. Does it focus on missions and values? So do the people on your team know what the mission is? Are you talking about it every single day? So that when they are asked what their mission is, they can say, well, we work with organizations globally. We provide solutions for teams and organizations to lead, engage, and grow their people. Do you know what it is that your company does, and have you shared that vision or mission? And is the goal to develop future leaders? We know if the goal is to develop future leaders, we're already starting to walk down the path of transformational leadership. So what are some things that you're going to have to do as a transformational leader, because this is not easy stuff. This is a, a complete change, uh, a change in a paradigm shift, and some people in the organization may not be ready for it. They also may come and look at you and wonder what it is that you want if you're suddenly changing from that transaction to transformation, if you're looking to encourage versus hold that carrot and stick. So what we need to do is we need to learn how to master our emotions. And that's very, very important. By mastering our emotions, we're going to be able to do different things and, and get people committed. So the first thing is transformational leaders understand how someone responds to a persuasive or motivational attempt. And it's important when we start to implement the program that we start to look and do assessments on the people that we're working with, on the team individually, so we really get to know who the people on our team are, what's important to them, what drives them, what their values are, because if we can understand it, we're going to communicate to them in a more effective way. They have empathy to adjust to the challenges that had not been anticipated by their team. So when things go wrong, 
that transformational leader stays cool, calm, and collected knowing that teams go where you go. If your team sees that you're, that you're a little bit uh, ruffled, that you're, you might not believe that you're able to accomplish your goals and objectives, they're going to sense that also, and they're not going to be as much on board. You're going to have to really sell them harder. So like we said, you've got to master your emotions as that transformational leader. Now, some transformational core competencies, they're key core competencies that each and every one of you needs to master. And the first is self-mastery. We need to master our own mind, our own skills. Again, we can't sell what we don't own. So we need to go in, we need to get some training, training like the training you're getting today, other types of training on leadership and conflict resolution and change and communication so that you're able to not only be that master, but you're able to teach. And that's what we want you to be able to do. We want you to be able to teach the other people on the skills that you've already mastered. You've got to have a transformational mindset also. So you've got to be willing and understand you've got to have buy-in that your transformation is going to help people be more productive. It's going to help uh, build your team. It's going to help you retain people longer. These are the things that you need to understand if you're going to be on board with it. And all you have to do is look at the companies using it, and that should be enough references to know that that transformational mindset is going to help yourself and your organizations reach high productivity levels that you might not have reached before. Influence is going to be another one. Okay, What type of influence do you have? And it's not only your influence in your organization, it might be your social influence, the way you're positioning yourself with your company or organization or your team so that people do have an understanding and they do have that faith, confidence and belief that you're the right person in the right position at the right time. And skill development. And again, I can't uh, stress the skill development enough because with skill development and as your skills start to grow, your team's skills are going to start to grow. Each week you should be sharing information with the people on your team. And what I always do too is when I attend a webinar, a continuing education program, I let everybody know. I want my team to know that I'm constantly working on myself to improve my skills. I share books with them that I feel that are, are going to be great books in order for them to build their team. There's one book that I, I really like other than my own book, Living a Championship Life or Game Plan for Success, but it's called The E-Myth. And The E-Myth uh, talks about the entrepreneurial myth. And what it says is that we need to work on the business as opposed to in the business. Some of us take so much time working in the business, and what we call those is those might be five or ten dollar activities. Whereas when we're working on the business, we're working on our systems, on our processes, on our people in order to grow the business. So the question is are you working in your business or are you working on your business? Because the on is where things really start to happen. So let's take a look at self mastery. Self mastery, your mindset is your world view. So our, our mindset is how we see the world based on our references, our linkages, the things that we've learned growing up. It defines what you believe and how you think. And it's also your attitudes, values, and feelings. So we need to understand not only what our attitudes, values, and feelings are, but also the people that we bring into the culture of our organization. Now the transformational mindset in order to understand this, we need to understand that most of your scripts were developed early in life. They are installed without our awareness and we absorb the culture. And we get this not only from our teachers, uh, from our education, because our education plays a significant part. The teachers that we've had, the universities that we've attended, they play a role in our transformational mindset. Some people might have even told you at some point you're life that you couldn't accomplish certain goals and objectives. It might have even been somebody in your family. And if you bought into that belief system, it's that self-fulfilling prophecy. So like I said is, the mind doesn't know the difference between something actually happening and something imagined vividly in great detail. So when people are, are saying, well, that's not going to work, you need to make sure that you don't buy into that. And you need to put that policy out. What if it would work? What would it look like? Sometimes you're not going to be able to change people's minds, so what you need to do is make sure that you don't buy into their belief system, because that belief system could possibly par paralyze you. 
Okay. So just to kind of move forward here, and I, I see that we're a little bit uh, over time. It's just I, I thought we were going an hour and a half, but since we're not, I want to cover a few more things here, case study, and then we're going to open it up to questions. So uh, great leaders form their own beliefs about change and transformation, and you'll also have access to all of these uh, slides, so it's real good. Um, social influence, managers rely on authority and leaders rely on influence. Managerial authority does not translate well into leadership, and you can't order people to change, but you can influence them. So how do we get started with a transformational program? And, and that's really going to be key, um, because all these uh, different areas we can bring in skill development, uh, some of the different habits. So let's just look at some habits of transformational leaders. And again, I apologize for going over time. This, just so much information I want to share with you. And again, you'll have access to all of these um, icon. You'll have access to all of these slides through Mile, and they'll get it. So three habits of transformational leaders. Speak from your heart and quiet your mind. When people see that you're speaking from your heart, they're going to know exactly what it is that's important to you, and you're going to be able to uh, get that information to them. Transformational leaders are curious and play full out and they tell relevant stories that can generate ideas and make a shift into one's mindset. So i just like to kind of jump forward, and again, I you know, apologize for running a little bit late on this. Um, I want to make sure to give you all the best information. So four steps to becoming a transformational leader. One, create inspiring vision. Motivate people to buy into and deliver the vision. Manage delivery of the vision. And build ever stronger trust-based relationships. That's really key is building those trust-based relationships with the people. So the quick case study I'd like to talk to you about, a company called Neutrona that I work with, we use a five-step transformation action plan. Step one, management and individual team assessments, because we want to make sure to assess the team, know the people on the team, know what is important, what motivates them. Second is we use those computerized assessments that are conducted on the ownership of the team, and we also make sure uh, to assess individual team strengths and weaknesses. On-site interviews with managers we have to make sure that their goals were congruent with the company vision. Step two is develop individualized action plans. So we need to have the individualized action plans for everybody on the team. They were developed for the owners accompanied by individualized coaching. The goal is to convert them from transactional leaders to transformational leaders. Become the chief encouragers. Step three, set management and team goals. So ownership needed to make sure to have those goals in place. And remember, what they need to do, they need to make sure people had ownership, responsibility, accountability, and creativity. Step four, symbolic focus. And the symbolic focus, we get the owners develop the project that would begin to bring about cultural change. And that's any project that people can get behind and get focused on. They communicate their vision to the management team and encourage to develop solutions. And the last step, step five, was delegation. The management team took ownership of the project and used their creativity to accomplish their goals, which is exactly what we wanted to have happen. When you do that, the results come right after that, and the results, the management team successfully completed the project. The owners had developed new leaders and transformed themselves in their com company, and the management team started to develop other leaders. When you get this down, when you're able to use this transformational leadership, you're going to see people and results happen overnight. Lastly, if anybody needs, you've got questions, we're going to open this up for questions right now, but if you need to get in touch with me, you're interested in, in more about transformational leadership, uh, let us know, get us specific questions, and we'll be sure to get back to you quickly so that we can answer all your questions and provide some solutions for some of your challenges. I want to thank you very much, and, and Ali, I'll, I'll open it up now for questions. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Rick, uh, for a very, very intriguing presentation. My apologies, I had to interrupt you <laughs> because of the time constraints, but I'm glad that we have a very good summarized presentation. So, folks, we are now open for Q&A. If you have any questions, you could either put it in the question box 
or you could equally raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on the webinar console, so if you click on it, you can have an audio conversation with Dr. Rick as well. Let me go to the question box. We already have a couple of questions. First one from Brother Muhammad Saif. The question is, employee engagement rate is a common metric that addresses the BCS perspective of people learning and innovation. How can we accurately quantify it? Well, I think uh, in order to quantify it, what we need to see is that we've got more buy-in when we're engaging our employees. Um, it's if they're being account, if we start to see that they're accountable, if they're getting projects done in time uh, and on time. And for instance, at Neutrona, one of the biggest issues we had was reporting, and we had a majority of managers that would not get their reports in on time. When we did the, our initial ins assessments. One of the questions we asked is what you know. What's one of your biggest weaknesses? What keeps you up at night? What do you not like to do? And it kept coming back reports. Well, we know how important these reports are to get done. So what we did was we set up a system in order to get them to under promise and over deliver. We set them up where they can get their reports in at least two days before, and we encourage them to do that. And then we taught them how to present those reports within five minutes in the meeting. What we started to notice is people were more engaged, people were showing up on time, and all the managers had their reports in early. That was our best benchmark to determine that they were engaged, they were being held accountable, and they were delivering great work product in a more productive environment. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another one from Brother Sharaf. Brother Mahmoud Sharaf, the question is, do we need to stick to one type of leadership approach or we need to adapt a different type for different situations? That is a great question and I believe we need to, to get to have different types for different situations. Uh, just recently I had uh, an employee down here in Florida who was from the Buenos Aires company I work with and he was one of those people not getting those reports in on time, not following through. And I went right over to the office, I, I sat down with him, and there were three different types of leadership skills I used. Uh, the first was letting, you know, was pretty much a transactional type of leadership. Then it went into a transformational approach, and then it went into praise and accountability. So I made sure when we went in, I told him uh, that we've already worked behind the scenes to get him in a position to accomplish his goals and objectives. Second, I held him accountable to me, knowing that I had done this personally in order to help him. So now he saw that I was on his side. And then I used a technique called check back, which we tell them, when can we check back with you? It's a dele delegation technique. And I followed up with him. At the end of the day, I told him I needed to get this back from him, held him accountable by the end of the day. So I used three different techniques with one individual who responded in such a dramatic fashion that the owners of the company actually thought I did the work for him, which I would not have been able to do. So I believe that we're going to constantly need to use different types of techniques based on our assessments and based on the individuals on our team. Always encourage and go for transformational, but you have to have a lot of different uh, techniques in your managerial toolbox in order to be successful. Thank you very much. We have another one from Brother Saif again. Being a transformational leader, does it require to master the technical part of your job or just need to enjoy the leadership and interpersonal skills and characteristics? I think you need to master both, especially if the technical part of your job is something that you're going to be working with other people on, training them, etc. Um, and the reason being is people will not have buy-in on your team if they don't feel that you can, can do your own job. So it's not just good enough to be a leader. You have to have an overall understanding of everybody's position. I'm not saying you have to be able to do it as well as certain people, but you have to have that overall knowledge and technical, um, technical capability in order to sell your goals and objectives because people are constantly judging themselves against others and you, uh, your abilities against themselves also. So it's very, very important to master all those aspects. 
Okay, we have another one from Mr. Paul Gracely. The question is, does transformation imply an ongoing process or a complete change from the situation today to something totally new? Transformation is an ongoing process, um, and it takes time to get people to buy in. When we started the process and in Trona Networks, the first thing we had to do was the assessment. And once we saw the assessment, we understood that there were going to be certain people on that team that were not going to adapt to the new culture of the organization. We gave them more training because I believe that uh, I'd rather make the save on an individual than go out and find someone new uh, to get them up and going. So I'd rather have someone that we could move laterally somewhere in the organization to help them discover. There were two or three people on the management team we knew were never going to be able to buy into that transformation, um, and we had to let them go uh, be successful at another organization. We have a brother who's raised a hand, so let me go. We have Brother Muhammad Saif. Brother, you have raised your hand. Could you please introduce yourself and ask the question? Hello, yes, can I hear <coughs> Yes, we can hear you. Please introduce yourself and ask okay. the question. Yes, my name is Mohammed Sir. Okay. Uh, my question is about employee engagement rates. Not, uh, I'm not looking at it from the transactional point of view. I'm not here uh, asking about if they are uh, assuming their responsibility to act on, on the different tasks being assigned to them. Here I'm talking about. Uh, a higher maturity than uh, uh, employee satisfaction rate. Okay, uh, it is a status. Okay, where we, you bring you 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 create an environment where the employee is more satisfied, something more than satisfaction. Okay, status. So this is my point. Can you elaborate more about how can you quantify, how can you calculate this, how can you track it and report on? to say that our environment or our company or our view is, is engaged? Well, I think what, one of the first things that we like to do, and, and one of the things I did was a, a very simple project at, at uh, the company, and that was to create um, a company newsletter that would talk about the accomplishments of the company, it would talk about the uh, employees at the company and include them in that newsletter, um, and what it did was it was the first project that we got everybody to be on the same team, to have buy-in, and what we did was we put them in charge of the project. Not just the managers on the team, but we had the managers also delegate to the employees there. They got real excited about the project, and because it was inclusive of themselves, because it showed what some of their accomplishments were in there, and we included people's birthdays, all these little different things. And, and the purpose, again, was to get them involved from the get-go, get them on board and get them to create something that we could acknowledge, something that they did on their own, because once they were able to do something on their own and we had brought them into the fold, then they saw that we were really going to make some changes and some cultural changes at the organization. Um, another big cultural change that we had to make when I first went in was there was no... Uh, agenda for meetings. There was no time frames, there was no meeting minutes, and their meetings, nobody wanted to go to meeting, and they weren't accomplishing anything. So we also started to institute some sort of corporate discipline and let them know it wasn't the culture of the country in Argentina where people would come in at 10 o'clock or 10.30 and leave early as opposed to getting in at 9 o'clock and, and going till 5 or 6, but it was the culture of what we wanted to create there. And the first things we did was give them little victories. Once they saw that after a period of time that they did have a say-so, that they were able to accomplish goals and objectives, um, and they were able to do it and make some decisions on their own, that's when we really engaged them, and that's when we had buy-in. And that's when they started to ask if they could hold their own meetings to come up with solutions and creative ideas and then present those to management. Once that happened, we knew we had transformed the culture of that organization. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, let me see uh, if Brother Sev has any further comments. Uh, uh, yes, Brother Sev, Mohammed Sev, do you have any further comments or any supplementary questions? No, thanks very much. 
Thank you very much for a very interesting question. And thank you very much, Dr. Rick. That really brings us towards the end of the webinar. Any concluding remarks that you would like to give before we dismiss out? Um, the only thing, conclusion I could, I could say is when you become that transformational leader, when you start to address some of these issues and you start to engage uh, everybody on the team, especially these millennials, these younger people who we can really develop, um, they need a little more attention than everybody else, but once we get buy-in with them, they will accomplish goals and objectives beyond our wildest dreams. If you have any further questions, you want to get in touch with me, uh, you have specific questions, you know, what would Rick do, I always say. Uh, you've got my email there, Rick at Rick Goodman. Send me a, a specific question on what your challenge is, uh, what you're attempting to accomplish. I will generally get back to you within 24 to 48 hours uh, with my ideas on what may bring you the most amount of success. Success. Uh, I, get, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank uh, Ali and the Mile uh, Institute uh, for having me on the program today. Um, thank you very, very much, and, and may this work for you in, in a great way where you're developing leaders around the world. Well, thank you very much, and I reciprocate the same. I equally want to thank you on behalf of the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship, Mile, for your time and for this valuable information that you have delivered through the live webinar. So thank you very much, Dr. Rick, and thank you all of those who participated in this webinar and for your questions. We are recording it. Please stay tuned to webinar.mile.org to learn more about our upcoming programs and equally to access the archive sections. With that note, I would like to end so you all will be automatically dismissed out. You all have a good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're calling from. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.